Hey guys, thanks for checking out this clip of Anatomy of the Church and State. Be sure to catch the full episode on Rumble or ChristiansForLiberty.com. Links are in the show description. Okay, okay. So in, in some ways, they they when they first got here, they didn't really have a ton of success as far as survival goes. But did they achieve success in in that they 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 found the religious and, and freedom that they were seeking? Absolutely. At least for themselves, they were able to uh, worship gods and, and worship gods worship God in a way that they had wanted to do so. Whereas before, they were not. They were for the most part. Uh, fairly safe to worship God. Now, they still had the Church of England somewhat over them. And when we get to the Revolutionary War, that will become one of the problems and one of the kind of forgotten aspects of the Revolutionary War, which was the Church of England was sending bishops over to kind of reign in the colonies, and the colonies didn't want that. Um, but they did. They created a society that was based off especially Puritan ideas. And there were Baptists who were coming over, very early Baptists, and they would kind of get bullied. One of them got famously beaten uh, in public. But you know what? They Over time, they found their way. They found the place they were supposed to be in. They would kind of form their own colonies. The Quakers and the Amish kind of created, you know, Pennsylvania over here. And these different groups found their place that they could live and serve God. Now, Overwhelmingly, the faith at the time would have been uh, Anglican because they still were coming mm -hmm. over from England, but many, especially as it got a little older. But in those early days, it was mostly Puritans, but everyone was finding their space and it wasn't always painless and there were problems. But overall, you want to worship God. If you don't like the way we're worshiping God in this town, just go to the town next door and make your own town. Start start over over there. Take your friends, take your church and move over. And there's many instances where that's just what they did. They're like, you know what? There's room enough for all of us. We're just going to find our own space. Right, right. That's uh, that's awesome. So the so the, the the Puritans were the dominant. Now, how in in those early days, you know, the population's growing, the colonies are growing. Um, how integrated is the church with the politics at the time? I mean, they are wildly integrated. So we mentioned Increase Mather earlier. One of the reasons he was considered one of the major leaders was because he was one of the big pastors of Boston, uh, Cotton Mather, as you see in the Way Salem Witch Trials, he's known as kind of one of the guys that was deeply involved in that. He was also one of the major pastors of, you know, Boston. Like these pastors were the leaders. They weren't completely integrated. I mean, they had governors, they had mayors and that kind of stuff as well. But the idea of the church and state was deeply wedded together and mm -hmm. your your mayor your governor was expected to be a solid christian going to church and attending and being a part of the community that way and at the same time if you were you know to try to be a different faith or if you were going to try and slide in as a deist or something like that they were going to reject <laughs> you on that terms they said, look we're starting a christian thing here and we're not going to let you in uh to our community if you're not going to be a part of what we're doing and so it was a very very integral part of everything they did. And that meant too, that uh, some of the weird ideas, like again, the Salem witch trial is probably a big example of that. Like, oh, we believe witches are true. So we're gonna you know, prosecute people based on those ideas, which it sounds kind of funny to us. It is a little weird right. to us, obviously, but they really believed that those witches were real. And so it, to them, it made perfect sense that witches are real. Um, I read it when I was doing, we did research for a Salem witch trial episode. We did a full hour and a half deep dive on our show on it, basically like, what do we do with the Salem witch trials, because as Christians, we do believe demons are real, right? We saw right. Jesus exercise them. So could something like that have been at play? Trying to just kind of get to the details of it. And one of the weird things I found was there's a logbook of a captain from like the 1640s where he's sailing along and he's like, hey, we were sailing, we hit this island, we did this, oops, we picked up a witch. So then we had to turn around and drop the witch back off. Then we hit this island, then we went into a storm. And it was like, to him, picking up a witch was the equivalent of a storm. It was just something that happened sometimes.